one. Welcome to A Professor's Life, your weekly insight into the ivory tower. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Stephen. Hello, folks. All right, and Robert is absent from today's podcast, so uh, it'll just be Stephen and I talking about grants. Sadly, Robert's SRTEs or his student evaluations will go down as a function of him not attending today. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, uh, we don't do, you know, um, retention in academia. So it's all about, uh, yeah, teaching eval scores. We're going to bottom out. Lack of attendance. Professor was not there. Yes. So um, this was another uh, episode uh, su- uh, topic suggested by um, Lutz or Lutz. I-, I apologize. I have yet to learn how to uh, pronounce your name. I-, I apologize deeply for that. Uh, and he had, in an email to asked us about uh, grants and talking about grants in academia and how all that works and some of our experiences, so on and so forth. So we thought we would talk about uh, grants uh, today. And I thought probably one of the best places to start when talking about grants is actually the grant culture of your institution. Well, that's a two-folded piece, too. It's a grant culture of your institution as well as a grant culture of your college slash department. Yes. But yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, smaller schools, it will be more of an issue of what's the grant culture of your institution. Right. Larger schools, you're right. It will be department uh, and uh, as, a, as probably the primary culture to be concerned about Mm -hmm. in in many ways uh so coming from a larger school Stephen, um what can you say about sort of the grant culture where you are well we are a massive grant factory last i think we heard i heard we are number two in the country in terms of grants um so and, and that's only lagging because our medical school does not do a lot of grant work at the moment, though we've brought in a provost specifically to help us develop our medical school grant work. Uh, so catch us in three or four years, we might be number one in the, in the U.S. in terms of grants. So with that in mind, the culture is pretty massive. Uh, this is what we do. Um, there's nearly every college, it's a big piece of, uh, of your work. It's included in promotion and tenure. For the vast majority of colleges and departments, Um, and in fact, in some places, it's how you have a job. You have to pay your own way through via your your grant work. Now, that's the institutional level, and again, we'll just uh, interrupt in the middle of that, though, to say um, College of Businesses in general have no history of grant work. Um, Any grant that you do is considered to be gravy. Uh, So we do have a a specific associate dean of... um, who deals with, with grant work and you have somebody who's specifically there to uh, one person in our college to help us facilitate the process. But that's pretty small. I mean, in, in my department where we have 15 faculty members, I think half have ever had a grant. Uh, and that's with um, over half of the people in the department actually being full professors. Yeah, fair enough. I would, um, I would say that in some sense, my institution is is similar to your department, <laughs> right? And right. that, um, you know, when you're at a small private liberal arts college, uh, we don't really expect grants to, to be obtained. Um, you could certainly go through your entire um, sort of promotion and tenure cycle, if you will, and not have a grant and be fine. Mm-hmm. It's just not what we base our performance on. Uh, that being said, grants are nice, mm-hmm. and they are definitely smiled upon if you if that does help you right. in your in your case. Um, and the grants that you know professors tend to get at the colleges that I've the small liberal arts colleges that I've been at or have known have been typically um, yes research grants, but I've always had an element of undergraduate involvement somewhere as being expected because that's what we do. Right. Right. I mean, it's going to be tough to sort of write a grant to hire a couple of postdocs because <laughs> we don't have the infrastructure for it. You know? <laughs> right. and, I, and, and maybe it could be done and, and no one has tried it. I don't know. But uh, it's just simply, I'd say grants are not uh, a nece- necessary part of our culture. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's uh, interesting, you know, we're, we're having a conversation about grant work where uh, both of us have actually gotten grants and yet it's not a critical piece. Again, we, we are threatened every year saying it's coming down we're gonna have to start doing grant work uh and we keep saying back to them to the administration and to our department chairs that that's great we would like to continue to do that but until you reward us for doing it we aren't going to work too hard at it um 
because we are we aren't rewarded we aren't punished for not doing it if you want to get some you know academics to do something <laughs> reward them for it uh you know counted in for for promotion tenure counted in for raises then we could really go down that path oh sure and you know what's been interesting in in my institution is sort of a uh, new culture of um sort of institution-wide or institution level grants so mm. maybe grants to provide scholarships for stem students okay. or grants to um, involve students in research, but not necessarily in specific academic ex- sections, because then the, the um, faculty member can apply almost like an internal grant that's externally funded. That's cool. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, we have a Mellon grant uh, at the institution right now, which you know professors of, the, of humanities and social sciences can apply um, for, for summer funding, helping students, things like that. So, you know, we have this growing culture. We're working with a consultant now at the institution level. And faculty certainly have the opportunity to be involved in those grants. In mm-hmm. fact, they, they kind of have to be. You, right. it's, you're not going to get buy-in from a granting agency if you don't have the faculty saying, yeah, we will participate in, uh, especially these things like the Mellon type grants, um, and types of grants where you're giving out scholarships, faculty have the opportunity to sort of contribute to that grant um, even if they're not going to directly benefit from funding, they'll indirectly benefit from having students to teach, and of course, having students keeps our doors open. Right, right, right. So right. there's the indirect uh, um, uh, thing. The grant culture, though, is an important thing to feel out in your school, I yeah. mean, in your institution, right? Because it could be P and T decisions based on yeah. that, you know. Uh, but also, if you are interested in doing externally funded research. Um, you want to know what that grant culture is because you want to know if there is existing grant support. That's a huge piece. And man, that's something I didn't have any idea of before I showed up here and started to pursue some grant work. Mm -hmm. Um, The amount of support you can get from the institution uh, that can make your whole life easier. (sighs) Don't undersell that one at all. Yeah. I mean, I have personal experience of going the other direction. (laughs) So I started with a, um, at a regional comprehensive Mm-hmm. The sponsored programs office, right? And you know they could do things like generate the boilerplate that you need yep. for certain sections, yep. And uh, help you with budget preparation, yep. And if you were funded, help you with, um, let's say, reports, the quarterly yep. reports, those kinds yep. of things. Uh, they can help you find sources. Yep. You can say, hey, I've got this idea for a project that involves this. Who's given out money? Yep. When I went to the small uh, liberal arts college, the there was no sponsored programs office, at least not in an official <laughs> sense, right? Right. And so it was pretty much all on the faculty member to produce all of that. And it is a lot of, if you haven't applied for a grant, um, there's a lot of paperwork yeah. involved. Yeah. Uh, and a lot, the budgets and, and you know, and all these things, if you're a first timer at this, it's, it's rather difficult. Well, and there's a lot of stuff that you have to take into account. So some places, you know, the more grant focused the institution is, the greater that they're going to charge you for overhead. Um, or, you know, what they call F&A. There's a line for that specifically. And I think it, at here we're at something like 56 or 58% at the moment um, just for base. In some places, some of the divisions can actually push over 60%. Um, but doing even just the simple calculations, okay, what counts in that? What doesn't count in that? Um you know, I was struggling through some of this. I'm like, I'm a pretty smart guy. I know how to do this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, I, I'm like, does this count? Does this not count? And I and I, I struggled to some extent. And fortunately, I went to then sponsors programs and they said, okay, well, no, no, we can work through here. In actuality, this grant, you don't need to do that for these things, but you need to have overhead on this piece. And so, da, 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 da. And so to hit the magic number, because this the, the most recent grant I, I, I got was a, a hard cap. Uh, so I had to find a way to get to the closest to that without growing over in a price is right kind of way. And I think I missed by $4. I think I was just shy of the total amount by $4. Um, and that's moving money around and figuring out exactly what gets taxed and what doesn't get taxed and so forth. It's invaluable. I mean, then they clear the legal aspects of stuff. They clear the system. They are the ones here uh, that actually have access to the federal agencies. I can't I can go to NSF, but I have to really get cleared by them to go in because they want to make sure that I'm representing the, our institution properly. Right. So they're, they're, they're a massive piece of what we do. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to come off sounding like we have absolutely zero grant support. <laughs> we, have, we have close to that. Yes. It's, we have one uh, percent. Yes. Yeah, we have one person, actually, who does, and I think she might be part-time. And, uh, <laughs> what, but she has been brilliant in getting working with um, private foundations mm. for 
essentially institution level or maybe department ish multiple department level kinds of, of grants um, but you know I have attempted an NSF grant completely on my own at my institution and it was yeah. wow I consider myself a bright person right but uh geez that was a lot of effort yeah. and I'm I'm pretty decent at math but, yeah. you know <laughs> the, uh, wow but I, I guess what I'm bad at is accounting I'm not sure but it's fair uh, but the issue is you know is that it's a lot of work involved and you don't have that support it it makes the process significantly harder because you have right. to learn what's all the boilerplate you have to know who to go to like I had to figure out what was the proper office to go to to figure out uh, what would the room and board fees be for summer for my students three yep. years from now yep right yep and because it was a three-year grant and I wanted to support them for the summer right uh, I had to make sure I had all the proper sort of wording and things and you know I was eventually I, I submitted the grant myself mm -hmm. I was given sort of the um, the number if you will for the the college mm -hmm. to the uh nsf and uh went through and did all of that stuff and some agencies will submit it for you so if you right. have you know sponsored programs offices will submit it for you You just give them sort of the basic information and they'll take care of all that that form paperwork so um well related to this point too is you you mentioned them you know finding things i'm actually on the uh daily list serve for grant work that comes through so every day, you know, they, they send out all the new ones that posted, which by the way, I can't believe that every day there's somewhere in the range of like 50 to 100 new postings, you know, on a weekly basis. This thing, I'll get my, my morning email with little digest forms of this stuff, and yet I'll still have 15 emails, each one with 10 different programs that have posted for the day. Um, and, and that, you know, gets overwhelming on the one side of that because the vast majority is irrelevant to me. I don't need to know what's going on in ag. It's great that ag's got things or biomedical has, has a new grant posted up there, but I don't do work in ag or in biomedical or uh, et cetera. And so that becomes, uh, I, I, I get lost in the middle of this stuff. Um, so, you know, the, you have that, that dual aspect. If you have it small enough that there's a personal aspect to it, they may, as you said earlier, reach out to you. Uh, and say, hey, here's what what's a good thing that might be a good fit for you. And I have that at one layer. Down at my college le level, I've got some of that. Uh, people reach out to me and say, hey, this is coming your way. We think that you should take a look at it. Or I have friends out in the field. Um, so I've been a part of NASA grants now for, for a couple of years. And that's basically people who are a part of that and who are basically scanning the NASA grants that get posted quarterly. Um, that, that makes it a little bit more manageable. But, um, you know, pay attention to see what they offer and see how customized they can be. And some of that comes down to if you have an, a, a, a program officer basically in your own college, which in many cases you will. You'll have it in your college in addition to the Office of Sponsored Research. Um, that person, once they get to know you and what you do, they may be able to route things directly to you. Yeah, yeah, and, and we've said this before in uh, past episodes, get to know your support staff. Yeah. <laughs> you know them well. They're invaluable. In every um, place, everywhere in your whole college. Yeah, uh, grants.gov is another good place to yeah. go. You know, if you're looking for sort of larger picture kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, get to know the grant culture of your institution. Um, and then, you know, get to know your sponsored programs office. Mm -hmm. If you have one, use them. Um, they can be very valuable. Now, I think another issue that sometimes first time grant writers might be surprised to hear is that, you know, you can contact the granting agency. Yep. It probably should, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the important thing. It's not that you can. You actually, they, part of their job, particularly a place like NSF where you've got a full-time program officer, this is what they do, they expect you to talk to them. In some places, they even pay, uh, or, or in this case, like my college, they'll pay for me to go to Washington, D.C. to go meet head-to-head -head yeah. with, with the person. Yeah. Um, and that, Or face-to-face, -face. head-to-head's a little little wrong way of framing that um yeah get to know them get to meet with them chat with them however you can and, and understand what they have to offer and, and you can figure out from that conversation you know you pose your ideas they will come back I mean, obviously they can't say yes or no in that conversation but they can get a sense of well what you're doing is not a great fit for us but if you framed it this way or you looked in this thing that actually might be a good fit for this specific program right or there's another division of this um you know uh, agency where, right yeah um, you know, and you can get to meet these people in different ways other than, you know, driving to D.C. for the particular thing. Uh, I was at a conference in May and they actually had granting agencies show up. They had mm -hmm. an Office of Naval Research. They mm -hmm. had 
someone called in from um, ARO, the Army Research Office, and NSF, of course. Yep. Um, and, you know, I had an ch- opportunity to speak with um, one of the representatives. And he said, yeah, send, uh, before you do anything, send us a white paper. And he goes, we had this, we had this thing that we like to get white papers first, because then we can tell you if it's a good fit or not before you go through the effort of preparing a full application. That's great. And, you know, if a white paper is accepted, it doesn't mean you're going to be funded. Yeah. It just means that you're not so far off the mark that it's impossible. <laughs> right, right. You're on the right so, track. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your, your project is aligned with their goals. Right. And, and that's a thing to keep in mind, too. Your project may very well be a really good project, but it could be denied because it just isn't a good fit for right. their mission, whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. So you want to get a good understanding of your um, granting agency. Yeah. And, you know, if, especially if it's a private foundation, mm-hmm. you know, um, there are some private foundations out there that are that are almost at the level of handshake and here's a check, <laughs> you know. And, and so, you know, it's important to understand what their mission is. You don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste theirs either. Right. Um, so- Having been on the, the back end, the, the side of actually um, reviewing applications and reviewing grants for a couple different agencies, uh, I will say that when I'm sitting in a meeting with the others, one of the biggest things that comes through is, will this person or this team be able to actually deliver? Will they be able to complete the research? Um, part of that is what's communicated in when you're actually going to meet the, the granting agency. They want to get a sense from you. You know, is it is it a good idea? Is it a good fit for us? Okay, those are two really important factors. But they also want to say, so we give you the money, are you going to waste it or are you actually going to do your research? Is it going to move you forward? Um, that's a that's not a small piece either. They really want to get a sense of this. Now, in part, that's, that's signaled by if members of your team have had grants with that organization before that have gone successfully, sure, that's a plus. But if you're a first-time person out there, you don't have that. Uh, and if you, for some reason, can't partner with somebody else who has had experience in that space, uh, you need to go in and talk to those people to say, you know, here's what my why you should buy into what I'm doing. Uh, I'm not just a pie-in-the-sky person. I'm not going to take this money and go out to the beach. Um, I'm not going to just go and try to do some things, but nothing's going to come out of this. You, you are a serious academic who can design their research and test their things and 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 publish this uh that that's you have something you have to communicate in that process yeah absolutely you know relating it to past work past Mm -hmm. successful work publications whatever the case may be and saying you know this is the next step i have a vision for where i'm going with this this is what i expect to have accomplished right it's not pie in the sky because you know there's this past work and we think we can extend it in this way or whatever right. the case may be right. unless of course you're one of those very rare and super lucky people that have a completely novel idea that will revolutionize your field right um but yeah that's <laughs> for some of us who time out you maybe shouldn't try Yes, yes. I mean, if you have the year of Einstein, then sure. I mean, you could go that path. But uh, for the rest of us, not so much. Yeah, yeah as, a, as a scientist, I don't know if there's a, a business equivalent of this at all. But as a scientist, I often get emails of, um, I have this wonderful new theory that proves Einstein completely wrong. <laughs> you know, these kinds of things. <laughs> these bizarre left field sort of emails. Yeah. And um, I don't know, I get one, you know, every every so often. And uh, it just sort of when we talked about sort of connecting it to password, just made me yeah. think of, uh, of 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 that kind of kind of. It, it, it may be revolutionary, but the likelihood is it's snake oil because yeah. it, it turns out that if Einstein keeps getting proved correct over and over again, it may take a hundred years, but it still works. Oh uh, yeah, it's everything from like you know proving Einstein wrong to, <laughs> to new interpretations of quantum, me- quantum yeah. mechanics. It's just it, it goes yeah. it goes off the deep end a lot nice. of times. Nice. So, you know, you don't want to be that person. You you want to have right. you know an established field of research that is a continuation off of something else. At least you, you know, I think for your first shot, it's a good yeah. it's a good idea. Um, now, one of the other things that we thought we would mention uh, as a distinction here is that there may be very, um, or I should say, very there be several uh, internal grant opportunities mm. that at, at your institution or maybe even in your department that are worth checking out. Yep. Uh, that can work as seed money for the project where you can say, you know, hey, I want to do this. I need a little bit of cash so I can, you know, buy this widget and then um, do this experiment and then use that to go after an NSF grant. Right. For example. Right. Um, Sometimes if your projects are small enough, you can be completely funded by the internal grant. 
you know as a theoretical physicist i can oftentimes actually do just fine with the internal grants mm -hmm. you need basically computing power yeah pretty much and computing power is cheap yep today it wasn't today. a while ago yeah no no no, no. today <laughs> computing power is cheap at least for the stuff that i need to do and you know so you might be able to get pretty far with internal funding and mm -hmm. and the thing that i have experienced though with internal funding um is that a lot of times it there is pre I, I don't want to use the term preferential treatment but the um the younger you are or i shouldn't say the younger you are i should say um the newer you are to the field mm -hmm. the more likely you know you may be to get it um not that i've yeah. been turned down for internal grants but it a lot of times the money is there to help the new people get started right 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 it's it, it is a true seed for for your yeah. future yeah yeah and you know and, and and so sometimes if the money is limited they may say well you know what we could give it to so and so but they've been here for 15 20 years right you know they're they're on their way whereas this person needs it to get started right we'd like to maybe help this person obtain tenure right. or whatever the case right. might be yeah you've already had the established track record so we don't need to seed your track right which might sound counterintuitive to the, <laughs> to the you know uh, person entering academia like, what do you mean they have an established record of success why would you not continue to fund yeah. them well yeah. no, that might not be the point of that money right Right. Uh, so even your internal grants, you know, we talked about what's the mission. Mm -hmm. You you want to be aware of that in your internal right. grants as well. Yeah. We have, in our college, we have two or three levels of small internal grants. One is really focused just on, you know, getting a research study done. Uh, this would usually be in the 500 to to $1,000 range. Uh, we can have graduate students apply for this, which is a really nice thing. So it's a nice little, hey, you need this to, you know, get this data. Um thousand dollars sure uh they can manage that so a thousand here a thousand there it works out well you need to buy a data set you need to collect data pay research all that kind of stuff um, we have a second level of grants which are really the seeds for things like nsf they say as you talked about chris it's like you know do this first part get this widget or um you know, pay actual by hours so that you can go and develop the actual uh task um that that's something we can we will put some money behind too, which is nice. Saying get the seed out there, uh, so that you actually spend time to develop that. And that may take you know personnel, it may take admin work, it may take something to get us you know a couple thousand dollars to get your your grant submitted. Um, and they they want to pay for that because they cause they say the return. You know what the return is. If you get a hundred thousand dollars back for a thousand dollar investment, pretty good. Um, and when they're taxing at fifty six percent, that that's a lot of money into their hands. Uh, we also have, you know, other little floating money that's that's different for every given year that are not grant so much as, hey, do you want to buy this one thing? Um, that's that's sort of you could call that a grant, but it's it's really a common good notion. So, do we want to go buy a data set that could be used by the whole college? Um, that's something that we do throw around a little bit of money behind every year. It's just, you know, again, it's another in a five or $10,000 range for the entire college, but it's something to look for. If you're looking, you know, to seed your own research in some sort of way, I need access to this. They have that little money laying around and you have to act in a very small window to get access to that. So that's the internal grant side from my experience. Yeah. I, um, at my current institution, we have a pro professional development grant is what we call it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly don't know what the cap is, but let's say it's um, $5,000. And that could be off uh, mm -hmm. by a little bit. I've only asked for um, the $1,000 to $1,500 mm -hmm. just because uh, for what I needed to do, it's been mostly travel-oriented. And, and right. it can be used for travel. It can be used to, you know, to buy widgets and right. things. And, uh, and it's pretty helpful. And uh, for a lot of us, uh, it gets the job done. Mm -hmm. You know, you, there's a... Uh, typically some kind of product that has to be the outcome right right all right and uh you know we have to usually give some kind of presentation just in mm -hmm. case maybe it's publicly available but other than that you know the the what's expected of us is this is relatively reasonable um very reasonable i should say uh, based on what they're willing to give us for a variety of things uh and those are really quite nice uh, we also have and this is along the lines of grant we have travel so we can get up to i think it's about fifteen hundred dollars in travel costs taken care of a year which is great because if you're an institution where it's could be a challenge to set up externally funded research mm -hmm. for whatever reason you know 
you still want to go to conferences. And a lot of times you use your grant money to pay those conferences, but right. this allows us to get at least offset some of the costs of the conference and be active in our, our, our field right. without having to have that grant to pay for um, for that for that travel. Fair enough. So, you know, those are the kinds of things we had. When I was at my previous institution, we had um, a couple of internal grants, but a lot of them at the time, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, hmm. but almost all of those, I believe, were oriented towards faculty in their first three or four years. Mm -hmm. So again, it was sort of um, to supplement any kind of startup money, right. if you got any at all, right. um, to, to sort of get your research program active and rolling. Uh, internal grants tend to be really nice because it's typically less of a hassle to apply for them. Right. At least that's been my experience. Um, well, they have the money to give away. In that yeah. way, it's it's pretty well set. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, the challenge, though, with these things tends to be at the smaller institutions is that your project can't be chock full of jargon. Hmm. You know, you have to demonstrate that what you're going to do is important and is valid, but, you know, you can't just throw a whole bunch of big discipline-specific words in there because the people who are evaluating that grant are going to be the provost and a committee, maybe a personnel committee of some kind, or maybe there's a committee specifically for evaluating this grant. Right. Chances are, at a small institution, they're not going to be chock full of physicists or, or business professors or you know whatever your discipline may be. Right. Uh, so I would uh, encourage anyone who is um, getting into sort of this, this, this field um, to learn how to explain what you do so that any reasonably educated person can understand it. Right, right. Very big, I mean, that's always the guidelines they have, internal and external grants is yep. that notion. Because if the people who are evaluating you, yes, they've got people who are experts in your space, no doubt. But they also have a lot of people who are more broad, um, that are looking at different areas. And, and, you know, they need to understand what this is. If you're going to a government agency, they're not the same as you. You know, they don't have 20 years of experience doing what you do. And so you need to take a step back and say, why should we do this? Why is it funding? And why does it meet the goal of this this funding agency? Um, right. it, that That's, again, going back to that earlier point. Yeah, I, I thought I would uh, like to mention something, too. And uh, I just came to mind as we were talking. Uh, but earlier today, I was reading an article in Physics Today. And uh, it's very relevant to this topic. It's called A Perfect Proposal. It's the January 2016 edition of Physics Today. Physics Today um, is sort of like the magazine for physicists. Mm -hmm. All right, it's like a, it's, uh, it's got research articles in it that are sort of to be written towards the general physicists, not just you know people in the, in the field. And it has the job postings for the field. Mm -hmm. It's just the, the thing, yeah, right? right. And, and so the article called A Perfect Proposal was a proposal written by Edward Purcell to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in January 1950. And he wrote the um, proposal to um, Harlow Shipley, uh, Shapley, excuse me, who at the time was the president of the Academy and also a, as an astronomer like Purcell. Mm -hmm. So Purcell was able to write type, a typewriter type, <laughs> since 1950, yep. a two page letter to Dr. Shapley saying, you know, this is the project I want to do. I want to use the money that was like $500 mm -hmm. for this piece of equipment, this installation, right. and I believe it will have this impact on right. the field. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, a two-page letter is a grant application. Right. <laughs> My, how the times changed. Right, right, right. <clears throat> uh, but anybody who has, you have probably have access to physics today at, um, at your institution it's generally something that colleges and universities um, subscribe to if they have a physics department and um, I would recommend you checking it out even if you're not an astronomer <laughs> uh, because it's just an interesting little like history of science kind of thing as to what you know was a grant proposal right. to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences at that time <clears throat> really well, uh, interesting the, the key thing to think about this is sort of a macro trend. Um, as institutions have taken less and less money from the federal government and then even the state governments, uh, you know, there's two ways to supplement that. One is tuition increases, and so we've seen lots of tuition increases across every institution uh, as wages have gone up. But also, we've relied more and more on grants, and as more and more people are being asked to do grants and more and more people's uh, tenure requirements 
are include grant work, there are just huge number of people who are submitting for grants in every given year. And if these federal agencies and the like have um, either set or even decreasing amount of money they can give, uh, or even at the at best case, they have um, increasing, but not increasing at the level of growth in the other areas and, and the requirements, these are getting more and more and more competitive. And that day, as you said, you know, writing a two page that says, I need this for this reason, please give it to me. That might've been perfectly sufficient. And today saying, I need this for this reason to do this one thing, which will revolutionize the world. They say, that's nice. And now write another, you know, 10,000 words. Yeah. Um, Perfect. you know, I mean, and, and, you know, yeah. and there, of course there's tricks involved and, and, and maybe this is, you know, a topic for another show, but mm -hmm everybody sort of knows the trick of making sure you have pretty much the project done before you write the grant application for it so that yeah. <laughs> you know you, you you can guarantee results and you don't have a grant that you know comes out without uh, the, the results you claim so it might be harder to get your next grant right uh, right those kinds of, of games that uh, that people play right and um, you know there, there's a balance obviously you have to communicate that this is something that we feel very confident that we will have it successful but not one that we've already done and therefore this grant is uh, just us spending money yes. so there's that fine line in terms of, of communicating this can be done we know it can be done but not that we've already done it yes. and you know along those lines too uh, beware of double dipping hmm you know, you can't you can't get funding from two different agencies for the same project in general. Yeah, that'll um, that'll piss off a lot of people. Yeah, and if you're not sure, um, <clears throat> talk to your sponsored programs office. If you don't have a sponsored programs office, uh, apply for a different project. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, CYA. Um, we had a a few other issues that I thought we'd like to talk about. I think we have a little bit more time left um, to go into them, uh, but just maybe briefly know your collaborators and know what they can do. Um, you know, for example, certain agencies may not fund international collaborators. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. They might be ta U.S. taxpayer supported agencies or they may be taxpayers from another institute, from another country, mm -hmm. and they're just not interested in funding foreign um, right. uh, collaborators. Yep. And, just be aware. And there, and there may be situations where they will fund foreign collaborators. Like they may pay for certain things, but not salary or whatever the case may be so do your homework before you envision this big project with lots of collaborators um, think about those kinds of things even if all of your collaborators are from the same country that you are from and you know search getting funding from mm -hmm. uh, be aware that government employees may not be fundable right so for example I have collaborators at Oak Ridge National Lab and I have to be very careful if I apply for an NSF grant because the NSF can't be paying for activities going on in a DOE you know, um, sponsored facilities. Right, so, right. you know, there's there's a lot of little rules and things that you just need to, to make sure you're aware of. And this is what the office of sponsored research really can be helpful for. Absolutely. Or if you don't have one of those experienced colleagues. <laughs> yeah. Always rely on somebody else. You know, you will be able to just throw a rock and hit somebody in your, you know, your network who has experience at whatever agency. Um, if you're talking about any of the big ones, you know, the, the federal ones, uh, it's worth having conversations with them as you move forward. It's worth building relationships with people who have done this before. It makes the whole process a lot easier. Be a co-PI the first time um, rather than the lead. And that, that walks you through the whole process. Yeah, and, and it may sound weird, <clears throat> but talk to your collaborators. <laughs> you yeah. know, say, I, I have this in mind and I want to do, <laughs> before you do it, Right. Say I have, you know, I was working on something, uh, a grant with the DOE collaborators, and I was starting to write something up, and I thought to myself, you know what, I better run this by them before, because I, you know, not that I was going to try to commit them to anything, but before I get too involved in thinking about this, mm -hmm. I should talk to them. Right. And sure enough, that's what they said. Oh, by the way, you know, DOE pays our paychecks. We can't take NSF money. <laughs> right. It's like okay, well, that <laughs> that eliminates that complete section of that grant application. You know, and it was good that I asked mm -hmm. first because i mean i could have put five hours of work into that part of the grant right. application and turn out it was all garbage because right. of you know funding conflicts right right so definitely talk because your collaborators will know about what you know they can do of course just like you know what you can do right um let's see i think that pretty much covers all of the big topics uh yeah. on the list 
Or we could talk about indirects. Yeah, there, there's a couple of other things that we can have conversations of, and we'll probably fill in a little bit later. Indirects, uh, some of the other aspects around some of these kinds of things. But um, it, it's probably good to wrap up here. You know, we haven't gone into any specific programs, really. And there's another whole conversation about how do you build, you know, how do you write a grant? Right here, we're talking more about how do you approach grants within the uh, your institution, within your job. Um, we'll probably follow up in a, in, in a couple of weeks or so, I would imagine, or a month or so about, you know, let's go more in depth in some of this. Uh, but for now, let's keep it the high end where we're really trying to say is, you know, Talk to people, learn from the process, meet the people who you're trying to get money from, uh, either you know face to face or or you know virtually, uh, phone or whatnot. Um, talk to your collaborators so that you don't waste anybody's time. Uh, you know, a lot of this is just it's like everything else that you have is that you know you you talk to everybody, you collaborate a lot more, you'll learn how to do a process well. Uh, and I think that that's my takeaway is that there are people at your institution, people who you work with, people at the federal uh, or, or the, the granting agency, everyone who wants to help you in this process, take their help. Yep. Find a good mentor. Yeah. And that's true professionally in yeah. various aspects, whether it's teaching, grant writing, or even just doing research, whatever the case might be, find yourself a good mentor. Yep. That can help you. Um, and so with that... I believe we will go ahead and wrap this episode up. All if right. you uh, liked what you heard tonight, please click subscribe or in, on YouTube or iTunes. Click like for the YouTube video if you're watching us. Um, you can email us at a professor's life at gmail.com or you can tweet us at a prof's life, P A P R O F S life, L I F E, on Twitter. <laughs> uh, a professor's life was taken on Twitter, so we went with a prof's life. Um, yeah, go figure. <laughs> and uh, we'd love to hear show suggestions, comments. Uh, just remember, if you're going to leave comments, we're, we're people too. You know, don't, be, uh, don't be too brutal. We're doing our best here. We are in our ivory tower, but uh, still, they, they, the, the slings and arrows can hit us. That's right. We are not made of stone, <laughs> even if the tower is. So, or actually, I guess it's made of ivory. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, well, why don't we all get back to writing? <laughs>